is eight o'clock. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. It is the DJ round table. And as always, I have some great DJs here tonight. And DJ Fire makes a return again. Um, I know he has a lot of irons in the fire like we all do. Uh, but he has uh, like four or five channels on YouTube and has like four different businesses running. So he has a lot going on and everyone else has a lot going on. Uh, some of us have uh, two jobs like uh, Jeff and also soccer with kids. Uh, DJ Brentley, he's got his, he's got his uh, daughter running him crazy and all the events he does. Matt is running crazy on California. And DJ Cool Thing, the best DJ on the beach in uh, beautiful South Carolina. Jeff is right up there in North Carolina. And we have people from all across the country here, of course, to answer questions. If you have a question or something like that, Put it down in the chat. We'll read it out on the show. And I do have some information here from last week. And as always, we appreciate you guys coming in here tonight. We are live on Tuesday nights on Twitch. You can go to the Twitch channel. Uh, link will be down below. As well as follow everyone here on the tubes. And make sure you follow their social media as well. And also, make sure you click that thumbs up, the like icon. Make sure you click the subscribe icon. I think Hunter just won a million dollars. And no, as well... No, I, I got a, I've got myself a DJ gig! Oh, yes. Look, <laughs> live. We are working yes. with DJs, just like you guys are out there. And, you know, having a, a gig come in, this is a good thing. Hopefully, it's a, something soon, Halloween or a birthday party or Christmas. Or it's something, and I'm sure Hunter will fill us it's, in on his details yeah, he has yeah, right now. For, yeah, yeah, it's for his 70th birthday party. Woo! Congratulations, <laughs> my dude. See? <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're all busy here. Um, I know we're winding down where our seasons. Um, I know I have a few more gigs left, and I'm going to uh, uh, say uh, this real quickly. Uh, we were doing a wedding show, Tracy and I, uh, on October 15th. So, you know, a couple weeks ago and a bride walked up to us and said, are you available on the 11th of November? And we're like 2024 no, or 2025. She's like, no, this year, which we're actually open. It's one of a few Saturdays were open in November because November's not as busy as like October has been. And it's like, OK, yeah, we're open. So, yeah. So you never know when th stuff falls in your lap. I'm not complaining one bit. She seems like a very nice young lady and we're working with her. Uh, for her wedding, small little micro wedding, fine, perfect, no problem. And we will knock that out like we do with all the other weddings. And just like the other DJs here, they knock everything out of the park every single time. They do a lot of great stuff. Uh, when I watch the, the gig logs you guys do and look at your social media, it always amazes me uh, the great stuff, the great work you guys do. And it's just make sure you support them on their social media. Make sure you support them on their endeavors and watch what's going on. Uh, first thing first, um, got a, uh, message through last week's show. And if you're watching this on YouTube, which we air on Mondays at 12 noon, it comes live. Um, uh, you can always put information down there as well. Uh, here's a thought, and this is something for everyone. And I think more of the DJs, it may be more club, but also happens at weddings too, and other events. Who feels obligated to play a guest request or, as the kids say, recommendation if they hand you money, like $5, 10 15 or even $20, if you aren't going to play it? Do you hand it back to them? How would you handle someone giving you money and, let's say, they come up and request something that's on the Rising Up playlist or a song that they want, you know, a Metallica song and you're in an EDM set? Or something like that. You. How would you handle that? How would you give them the money? Say, I'm sorry. Do you have a no tip no. policy? What would what you do? Money. So I'm going to go. I'm going to go with start. Hunter first. And uh, ask Hunter, what would yeah. you do? Uh, yeah, yeah. I missed what you said because I had to re, you know reconnect my internet. It was getting unstable. Okay, no problem. I said uh, this is from DJ Aga, um, who always answers has a lot of great questions. Here's the thought: Who feels obligated to play a guest request, or as the kids like to say? recommendation if they hand you money like five ten or even twenty dollars if you aren't going to play it do you hand the money back to them so this is a song no. that may not fit what you're playing so someone comes in and says hey 
I want, you know, you know, mm -hmm. Iron Maiden, or I want some other song that's not fitting the event you're doing. Oh. Here's $20. Do you get the money back or do you keep the money and say, hey, oh, yeah, I kind of I, I, yeah, I experienced that when I uh, was DJing Sam's Corner, like some of these kids uh, gave me some money, you know, to play a song and stuff. And I actually accepted it and I played their request. I don't want to be a jerk to them. So I decided to play their song and accept their tips. Yeah. What happens if it's something that doesn't fit the event? Let's say you're doing well, a... Then, then I, well, well, then I play anyway. I mean, it was a hot dog joint, so it didn't really Oh, yeah, well, I guess. I but I'm saying you're doing a wedding, and all of a sudden they want, like, breaking up hard to do. Or they want um, Better Man from man, I, Pearl Jam or something man, like that, you know? And, well, well, then I play it, you know, being the nice DJ that I am. and But could that ruin the I'd event? Play it. Mm, probably not. <laughs> Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, it, it, it can go either way. So, uh, Jeff, I'm going to ask you, have you run into this? And if not, what would you do if someone gave you a, a tip and give you a song to play that you know you can't play it or it doesn't fit or it's not the proper thing to do? Well, I've, I've never had a tip that's, you know, that anybody was serious about. But um, but if someone did try to pass money and, um, yeah, they wanted it for a wedding, if it fit in the bride's, uh, you know, playlist, sure, I would I would fit it in and play it and, and take the money. Uh, if it did not fit, if it was something off the wall, it was going to mess up a wedding, you know, I would do, politely decline and, uh, you know, say, hey, keep your money. I can't play that. It's it's not on the bride's playlist. Uh, but if it's like a, um, you know, high school event where it's just another rap song or something like that, sure, I'll, I'll fit it in. But um, if I have to have it, you know, I'm not going to pull something off the Internet, not knowing if it's clean or not. And, uh, you know, and try to play that or <coughs> off somebody's phone. But yeah, yeah. I, and the, if the right situation were to arise, sure, I would keep it. Excuse me. Keep, can you play a song off my phone? I have it on my phone. Can you play it? <laughs> <laughs> so dj fire oh, brother i haven't seen you for a little bit hopefully everything's going great in central illinois uh and uh Dwayne also joined us too Dwayne, great great to have you back on here tonight uh we got full house tonight we need a couple more guys we need, we need eight squares then you know we could play uh we could if we could play hollywood squares then <laughs> uh so, DJ Far, what about you? Would you take a tip if you know a song you couldn't play, or would you just take it and play it? Uh, depends on if I'm allowed to take requests at uh, a wedding. You know, I always have that on my paperwork. Do you want me to take requests? Um, if someone's going to tip me and I can't take requests, yeah, I'll take it. Uh, if the bride says, which I've never had anyone say, do not take requests, um, just play what's strictly on our playlist. Um, so, I mean, if, if they said not to take requests, then I probably wouldn't and, you know, decline the money. But if uh, as long as they were OK with it, I'm OK with it. So. And I don't know if you know, but I busted out my DJ controller at my last. Um, yeah, I didn't event. see you touch Solstice it. Gave me I didn't a, see you touch it. <laughs> Solstice gave me a big holy crap. <laughs> I, I saw that. It, I, I wanted. I wanted to say congratulations to you when I see, I saw you next. I was going to give you a call, but I know during the daytime you're busy, and I was hoping you'll be here tonight. But I wanted to say congratulations. Welcome to the DJ world. <laughs> Fire is doing <laughs> with with uh, a controller. It is so, uh, it is difficult, I, but I don't know if you noticed. I tried the picture I posted on Instagram. I didn't take a picture of my computer. Had it up on my top tray on my booth but um so i haven't got the whole thing figured in with putting music in i mean a little bit i can do one song and then trying to get it and figure out the fade i'm learning still at least it's out on the table i've got the hotkeys and stuff all figured out but um honestly that last gig um me and mike both had super boring gigs last week so i helped him with his high school Halloween dance. And then I went and did the fifth quarter. And then he had a gig that next day, Saturday night, and it was a total blowout, total bust. So that's going to be an interesting gig log. Um, and then I guess me and him got some really cool stuff we're doing together uh, in December. 
uh, with two great big giant trussings, uh, an ice skating rink, and the square of Charleston, Illinois. Well, we're having um, a big ice yeah. skating rink brought yeah. in for Christmas on the square. Yeah. And they're wanting me and Mike to light it up because the company doesn't bring any lighting. And, of course, December, it gets dark at 5 o'clock, and the deal's from 5 to 9 or something like that. So we're going to bring in our dressing, put car lights on it to light up the uh, ice. Well, uh, you know, I just got it. I'm even yeah. going to bring in some yeah. of my big. Yeah. I'm going to bring in some of my big movers, have them shining up in the sky mm -hmm. and have them shining down on the deals. So. Well, well good luck for you. And then, Hunter, uh, I know you want oh, your chomp in a bit to talk about the gig my you picked up at the beginning yeah. of the show. 70th birthday party. Yeah, 70th birthday party on November 10th from 5 to 9. There you oh, go. Oh, yeah. There you a go. So if you're in the uh, if you're in Hunter's area, wish him well. Wish him luck. Give him If you see him driving down the road, give him thumbs up. You know, do not go to the yeah. event. It's a private event. Do not go there. Oh, I'm going to go. I'm going. No, no, you're, you're not, not going, Matt. You're not going to leave California. You always. Uh, I got the date You're not going anywhere. <laughs> I got a wedding. Actually, no, I don't. I am free. I'll, I'll see you in South Carolina. No, no you're you not won't. going. No, you won't. No, you won't. So, <laughs> Brentley, I got to ask you, what would you do for uh, with a tip if someone gave you a tip and gave you a song that uh, they want you a it would, uh, doesn't fit what you're doing and b they want you to play the whole song. Because I know you're a quick uh, uh, the whole song. Up. Yeah, no, that's the, the whole song. No, you're not getting that. And let I take that back. Unless it's something like Backstreet Boys wanted that way, or you know, one of those songs that everybody will notice you've cut short. I'm not playing the whole thing. But when it comes to actually somebody offering money to play a song, it will honestly depend on the venue. Be it you know, if I'm in a club, like you know, the dance and EDM clubs I'm at. If you ask for, you know, like some of those rock songs that do have, you can actually mash up or do something with, like Bon Jovi Prayer or something like that. Yeah, I'm kind of game. I'll play an EDM remix. Cool. At a wedding, though, it really depends on what I'm allowed to or not allowed to play. Like, I will say Saturday and Sunday's weddings, I was not allowed to take any requests. And so much so that in the welcome speech from the bride on Saturday, she's like, do not ask our DJ for a beep because he's not going to do it. I'm telling you all now, he's staying to my what I've given him. And well, what she'd given me basically was 10 songs. But with the exact instructions to do what I did at her maid of honors wedding two months prior or what I do at the two college clubs I'm at here. So I had free reign to play whatever I wanted except for Shania Twain. On Saturday, she hates Shania. I don't know why, but didn't want to push the question. As do I. Oh, I, I, she's not my favorite. But if you're at a Wisconsin wedding and you've got more than ten women, you best be playing some Shania because you oh. can't play before he cheats at a wedding. So, if you're going down that country road, Shania's like you know one. I can think of three of them that are in my back pocket, kind of like Taylor Swift songs. Uh, I've now started actually going when I'm doing the college club gigs. I'm going to the Taylor Bank now because no one's doing what I want them to do. Let's play Trouble. Go. And they start doing what you want them to do. But I've been given tips to pay requests, and I will do it if I'm allowed and if it fits the format where I'm at. One of the best tips I ever got, though, was $100 to not take requests from one guest at this wedding. And they were two guys pursuing the same woman. And they were good friends, so there was a very competitive edge to the two of them. But I took the hundred dollars, and I, at one point, I'm like, I might have to give this back because I don't think because he asked for a couple songs I was going to play. It was already on my playlist. But then the guy who gave me the hundred dollars got thrown out by the groom's mom. So for the whole ninety minutes he was there of the dance, I just kind of ignored the uh, his friend that he paid me not to you know take any requests from. And then once he left. All right, whatever you want. So, yeah, it, it it just honestly depends on the situation and where I'm at. And yeah, every every event is different. Uh, every event uh, that you do, there's always there's not a right or wrong answer. But I, I look at it this way: I try not to take tips from people, especially for songs, because one again, I just see if it fits. You know, a song it may be a good song, but 
does it fit what I'm doing? Does it will it fit later on? Did I already play it already? I've had that happen before. People might hear the song over again. Like, come on, I'll pay you for more money. Or uh, or they want an extra last song and they're like, I'll give you a hundred bucks. It's like, no, the, the facility wants to charge a thousand dollars. You want to pay the facility? Oh no, you know, it, it's stuff like that you run into. So I, I always share I always shy on the side of no, I don't don't I don't want your tip. Uh, you know, the bride and groom are paying me for services. Um, and then the other part of it is that, you know, I can't guarantee I'm gonna play a request. Requests are not guaranteed. Like Saturday night, my rec- I had re- you know, the request sheets out. I had six sheets of requests. I had more music that I could fill the whole entire wedding. You know, and you it, 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 request it, forms. people request it. Sometimes it was the same song four different places. You know, people <laughs> have, request, you know, request. people request is not a guarantee. But you know, it's one of the things that you have to look at what is was right. I guess we lost DJ Fire. <laughs> so, uh, Dwayne, <laughs> on you, uh, if you had an event, be it a wedding, be it a party, be it a birthday party, or anything, and it, if someone came up to you and gave you like five or <laughs> ten or twenty dollars, do you feel obligated to play the request, or do you go get the money back, or do you say, "Hey, no, thank you," or what? What do you do? It depends on the situation because. Um... If it's a song that I know that won't work or it's inappropriate, I won't play it at all because it's not that your five, ten, fifteen dollars is not worth the headache that I have to deal with um after playing that song. But um I've been given money to play songs before and at a wedding. I thought it was pretty cool and it worked. So for the most part, if it fits, I'll play it. I don't have a problem playing it. You know, you just made a great point. Uh, playing a song, if you can work it in, if it fits. And, you know, more often than not, this is something I've learned, at least at weddings. And I've caught on to it more and more as of late, that if a bride and groom are, like, putting out, for example, I've had to do a lot of all EDM weddings recently. And at first you kind of look at it like, well, oh, crap, this is going to be kind of scary. But then when you think about it, birds of a feather flock together, as the saying goes. So if the bride and groom really want all this kind of one genre, you can rest assured that their friends are going to be fairly in that same avenue with them. And that request that we might think is out of left field may actually be the one banger that you're like, well, crap. One, I never considered this song a banger. But two, the way it worked with this group of people, put that in my back pocket because maybe that's a song I can drop out again at another time that will work as well. But I've definitely caught that if someone, if, you know, in a wedding you know, environment, if you have all these, you know, all their close friends, they're going to be fairly close to what they all like. The wedding I did two weeks ago, it was literally, they're like, you get through it. 30 minutes or less to keep the old folks happy. And I literally played like three true bangers, which was like wobble, yeah, peas, I got a feeling, and no one moved. And as soon as I put on some grizz and sudden death, the entire crowd went up. And it was like, well, we're doing four hours straight of all EDM. And one, it, that actually helped me in a lot of ways from their Moss playlist and don't take requests because for my sets at some of the clubs I'm at, there are songs that I kind of forgotten about or, yeah, maybe I'll play it later. Then I'm like, oh, that is a banger. You're playing that next time you're at Legends or the next time you're at Stadium View. So I'm always down to play a request provided I can make it work. And knowing what a lot of the requests are, they're going to be similar to what your couples want or the event person throwing the event wants. Well, here's something yeah, that reminds you, uh, me of. I was uh, going to say that reminds me of the wedding that I did last year. At the time, there was um, they're called Four Dumb Blondes. Yeah, four Dumb Blondes. Blonde. Yeah, Blonde. yeah, what's up? At, yep. At the at that time, I didn't. I wasn't familiar with the song, and they requested that song like four or five times, and it's like everybody didn't show up to the uh, wedding reception at the same time. So every time somebody new came. They wanted to hear that song. And I was reluctant to play it. So that's when I got on the mic. It was like, we, this is a big song that 
uh, someone requested again, and I kind of find out every time I played it, that was the hot song. And they, no matter when I played it, how many times, they all gathered around and sung a song. So it's like it's like you gotta use your judgment because sometimes when they send in requests, sometimes we'd be thinking one thing when we DJ DJing, but yeah, you can read a crowd, but sometimes those requests might be something that is um, important to that group. And when you play it, it ended up turning your whole night around. So yes, oh, that's I one of the few it. times I will play a song yeah. more than one time. Yeah, that reminds me of my most recent wedding two years ago for my cousin Cheyenne's wedding when she told me that um, I wasn't allowed to play any requests because I know she trusts me with the music selection and stuff like that. And people came up to my booth saying, hey, can you take, do you take requests? Do you take requests? I was like, no, I'm not allowed to take requests. So I was, I got the look. Like, are you kidding me? You're not going to play my song? I mean, when people are asking for stuff, though, as a DJ, if it's something we've never heard before, and then I got on the mic. Real familiar with it. Wait, like when I got on the mic, I I said uh, that I don't take a request. You know, whatever I play is what I what you're gonna hear. And then I guess I, yeah, I put the mic down and see if I'm, music we have. with that same shot. If I'm at a wedding and I know I'm not allowed to take requests. One thing I will do is when I'm saying my intro before, you know, entrances, I will kind of jokingly throw that into my intro. Like, sorry to tell you this, folks, but requests aren't allowed unless, you know, you got, you know, a few hundred dollars. Otherwise, I can't play it at all. And I'll try to be slightly joking about it, but let them know that I just can't do it. So it doesn't get to the steamrolling point later in the night where everybody's asking for like, what was it? Uh, no interruption for one night from Hoodie Allen. If you haven't heard it. It's totally not an appropriate wedding song. But I had everyone that I had the song, and I finally went, I'm like, it had to be like 25, 30 requests from everybody at the wedding until I finally went to the bride and the groom. I'm like, okay, I know it's on your do not play. And she's like, it's only because I don't want to hear it, but him and his friends want to hear it. Go ahead. So that's the other thing I try to avoid to getting to that point where they're bothering the bride and the groom as well. So one of the things also to think about here uh, is you may have, you know, I know you said uh, birds of a, fl of a feather flock together, but is um, when you have people who like different music, uh, give a perfect example, Tracy and I, we don't like the same music. She's a rocker. So she likes Disturb, Shine Down, Godsmack. You know, she likes also 80s, 80s pop, 90s pop. Uh, she likes, you know, but she likes the Pesh mode and stuff like that. You know, good stuff. Now, I'm not saying it's bad. She, oh, yeah. she likes. <laughs> Versus me, I like. Mode is probably one of my top five favorite bands of all time. She also likes, again, she's been to Slipknot concerts. She's been to the Sturb concerts. And, you know, she's lately, you know, she still goes. She has fun and she enjoys stuff. She was with a couple of friends. I'm not a fan for that music. I like. Yeah, I actually. Yeah, you know, I actually went to I, a concert recently back in September. I'm gonna go see Duran Duran. I like yeah. dance music. I like pop music. I like you know 80s, 90s, 2000s. I like. There's a lot of new dance stuff I like, but I, I like more the the dancier stuff, more the faster beat. But I also love you know mm -hmm. freestyle, and I love. Euro dance and stuff like that. That's like my that's like my stuff. So when we got married, we could not find a first dance song. And she got so mad at me. She doesn't like surprises. She had me pick the first dance song. She put her hands up, said, That's it. I'm done with it. And I picked <laughs> and I I, I I picked a song and she loved it. And you know, it, it's Peter Gabriel in your eyes. Um, and it's a great song. And I picked that because Peter Gabriel's got a great voice. He's I like his music, but also I knew it had a lot of things she would like too, and it speaks about my, our relationship and how much she means to me. And again, that's that's twenty four years ago, <laughs> but when you still hear that song, it, it means a lot to us. And it's one of the things that you know. Again, sometimes you look at okay, the friends may like the same things. A couple of Tracy's friends, yeah, they like that stuff. My friends like other stuff you know some do like uh metal you know that like tracy likes or rock 
Um, but some do like stuff like I like, and that's two different genres. So yeah, you can roll the dice and see what works. If it works, hey, great, no problem to win. If it doesn't work, just because you know people are together, they they, do, they may not share music likes, but they may like other things. Uh, so I'm gonna go to Matt since I haven't heard from him yet. On the hey, you know what? If I gave you some money, would you play this request? Uh, uh, well, I'm Jewish, so yes, uh, I would. <laughs> uh, money talks. Um, five, ten, fifteen, twenty doesn't matter. Uh, five bucks is five bucks. Every dollar counts. So. <laughs> Unless it's specifically on a do not playlist. And this is why I print out all of my stuff and I don't have it on an iPad or some uh, Vibo or anything. Like I literally have it in big, bold red letters, do not play. And then all the songs are listed and they come up to me, request a song and it's on that list. I just show them, be like, sorry, I can't play that. Um, those are the only thing I wouldn't take the money for. Um, otherwise, like as Bradley said, like there's always a way to fit something in. Um, and if it won't fit, then you could just call the guest out and that way they can get mad at them and be like, oh, we got a special request. Brandon wanted this song played at the wedding. Um, I won't say like, if it sucks, blame him. But <laughs> I always listen to it though. Um, I always have my iPad with the cell connection so I can put up on Spotify if I can't find it on DMS to, to add to my song. <coughs> um, but uh, I always listen to it first to make sure that it's, you know, playable and not going to kill everything. And if it's a slower song, like I said, I'll, find a place to fit it but i'm all for that i mean i i am always under the impression that i'm not getting paid enough at any wedding or any event doesn't matter how much i charge them initially i never feel like i'm getting paid what i should be so um the tips make up for that okay so, and, and also my my tip money like the weddings i do get tipped i usually just that that takes care of my assistant so uh or lighting or photo booth person so like usually the Two hundred dollars or three hundred, whatever I get as a tip, like I usually don't pocket that. That just goes straight to whoever that I need to pay. So to me, it's like thank you. You just paid for my assistant, so I don't have to take money out of the price that I quoted you. Um, so, but the extra, yeah. I mean, I've I've only ever really, I've never got like, I did get, I did get two hundred dollars to play a song once. That was the only time I ever had, a, and he left before the song was even played. And his wife was like, don't even worry about playing the song. Just keep the money. So, <laughs> all right, sure. Um, it would, yeah, it would have been a weird one anyway. I mean, I was on when I was on in downtown Division Street in the 90s, someone asked me to play EWF Raisins. And I'm like, oh, hell no. And then he show, he pulls out a couple hundred bucks, throws it on top of my turntable. I'm like, oh, hell yeah, we're doing this. <laughs> I killed my dance floor. Just for this. But then all of a sudden, it kind of worked the uh, like everybody left he goes out there with his girl and then all of a sudden you see like 20 more couples joining them i'm like okay then this is gonna go okay i can go right back into dance bangers right after this kind of like working a wedding set so to speak mm -hmm. but yeah there's a case like if you throw the right amount of cash at me at a certain like where i have an open format gig it's on i, I will probably do what you ask like to like, I, when I play King Von, take her to the O one night, like, it's 8.30, right when I started my set. And there were a bunch of women in the bar that were closer to my age than the average college kid. And they all still got down with it. I'm like, okay, well, this is how the night's going to go then. But when it comes to, like, the, you know, close format stuff, yeah, I'm not taking chances. So it's always a surprise with anything you play. And, again, you have to do your best judgment and decide – does it fit? Does it not fit? Does it, you know, so forth, so on. There's a lot of things there. But uh, I, I guess DJ Aga, I, most of the DJ here would take the money and run. So why not? <laughs> That's the, uh, it seems like the table is saying that. So if the, the round table is saying that, uh, take the money and run, why not? So, uh, Chris, I saw, I see you. Yes, I had to spend some time with uh, uh, tech support uh, troubleshooting today, about two hours to get my, camera working because of the update of uh the software we use so yes uh i got that working uh thanks to uh some tech support and some e uh text messaging back and forth live chat um so with everything going on and stuff at events we all have uh photographers videographers that come in 
and they want to set up lights or their equipment. And sometimes they'll set their equipment near your equipment. Uh, they'll set up, you know, usually next to it or in your area, uh, share some power from you. Uh, sometimes put their bags near you, put their equipment near you, uh, which I have a problem with that. I have a problem with them setting up a light next to a speaker and the others on the opposite other side. I have a problem with them doing certain things. But this past Saturday, um, I had a videographer. That person uh, put up a couple things that I wasn't really thrilled about. Uh, and I shared some images with uh, the table before coming on the show. And one of the things I shared was the um, microphone. Now, I, I, I gave an option for the videographer to connect to the board. Um, I have off the main, uh, the RCA out of the main on the, the XZ um, into a XLR, uh, into a quarter inch or into a uh, one eighth or 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So they can plug in three different ways as well as directly RCA's direct, direct out. Um, they said no. They then put a microphone on a stand and faced it to the top part of the array. So the top part of the array is your two and a half inch drivers, which are doing your highs and your mids. And your lower end, it comes out of the base on the bottom, your base unit. And it, it, it together it blends together on the floor, you know, a few feet in front, but out of that top, it just highs and mids. It's 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 it, it's pretty pretty high. Uh, for volume and then the other part is that um they part a light in front of my booth um blocking some of my dance lighting then the other part was during uh dinner they parked two cameras on stands right in front of my booth um just left them there and again i understand they got they ha they have equipment they want it you know easy to grab hold of which i'm a problem with but them parking right in front of me is like, I don't care what you're doing. I'm more important than you are. And it's supposed to be a teamwork. And I, I like working as a team. And you'll get a photographer or videographer say, hey, can I park something, you know, here? Oh, yeah, no problem. Park it over there. You can park it behind, you know, my speaker, park it behind me. You know, if you want me to keep an eye out, just tell me I'll keep an eye, no problem. You know, just, just talk to me. But this person decided to park the cameras just right in front of me, blatantly didn't care. Just put them up and that was it. Um, they did leave early in the evening. Um, they left. We went to midnight. They left about nine o'clock. And again, it, I didn't have anything bad with them personally. Yeah, you know, they were very pleasant, stuff like that. Just that their work ethic for, uh, you know, just plopping stuff anywhere was, uh, how can I say, was not very enjoyable. <laughs> Uh, especially blocking my view a little bit with stuff. And again, it, it's we're not talking about like put a a, uh, a sheet up or something like that. They just put up a camera on a stand, but it's two cameras on two stands and two tripods. And again, it, it's I got to look around it to get I'm sure I get a clear view of the couple, of what's going on. And there, you know, plus also again right in front of me, they're bringing the salads out because I'm on the dance floor. Uh, you know, bring the soups out. They bring the entrees out onto the dance floor. That's why a lot of you know venues will bring out the the trays, the carts, and they'll distribute from the center out. So that again, that's not a problem. I see it all the time. Very efficient. You get the food very quickly. I get you see around you know the servers and stuff like that. No problem. But the cameras there were uh, I, I, to me just I, I just felt unprofessional. So the question for the table is this. If someone parked their equipment in front of you or decided that, hey, you know what, I'm going to take a microphone, put it onto a stand and stick it into your speaker versus you offering them a connection another way, you're off the back of the speaker or off your board or whatever, what do you do? How do you overcome that? And what do you tell someone, hey, don't do that? And again, I told her, I said, hey, you can connect right here. I just got you know, a smile and her nodding her head, yes, but no, I'm not going to do that. I'm okay. It's okay. So I'm going to go with Jeff for this one. I'm going to start with him. 
there in North Carolina, if someone decided to park a bunch of equipment in front of your booth, especially you have a TV up or something like that, I didn't have a TV up, but still, you know, they park your equipment in front of you and block some of your stuff. What would you do? Well, I would politely, you know, ask him to um, position it somewhere out of my view of the dance floor is, you know, I would tell them that my view of the dance floor is just as important as their view. Um, simple as that. Uh, be glad to work with them if they want to put it next to a speaker or something like that. That That's fine. But not directly in front. Uh, I, I think that's uh, it's, it, it's on the verge of being rude and not knowing, you know, how weddings work djs work at weddings it's just like me um you know being rude to a photographer you know it's just a dozen ways you can do that and if you've uh, i've been a wedding photographer and it's you know you just got to work together uh simple hookups is uh if they don't want to use your your audio out of your board you know, that's uh, you know the bride ain't gonna like the sound <laughs> putting a putting a microphone up in front of your tops i mean that's gonna be crap i mean that's gonna sound you know, that's gonna sound terrible uh it's all you know it's not your that's not your job to uh, tell them you know that that's not how to do it um you know it's 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 gonna be it's just gonna sound bad and unfortunately you can't tell them or force them to uh, hook in correctly so just do what you can do okay so um, next, I'm going to go to Dwayne. What do you think? Mm, I never ran into that. Um, I've just been fortunate enough that the photographers asked me to plug into um, either a out of one of my speakers or a out of my um, mixer. But other than that, I haven't had anybody like just be rude. And then most of my photographers and um video people they're mobile so they never had anything on a stand they were already always moving around the um, venue so i never ran into that myself but i would tell them that they'll probably get a better sound by going directly out of you know one of the outputs of one of my you know mixer or or speaker as opposed to putting a microphone in front of the speaker okay Let's go to, well, Matt's not here, so we're going to go cool thing. Cool thing. What about yeah. you? What do you think about some parking gear in front and not uh, not connecting or not doing what you're asking to do or suggesting? Well, just like uh, Dwayne down here, I never really experienced that with the weddings that I DJ because they're mobile. They have handheld cameras and they take pictures. I've never really had to deal with videographers, you know, connecting to their, connecting the cameras to the board, never had you know, to experience that. So if that happened, I just try to work with them as best I can, not be a jerk. Okay. And I would definitely be, I would definitely be likely, you know, I'll be more than happy to, to plug them into my external mixer. Okay. So uh, and if they decided to, yeah, yeah. Say if they decided to put like a microphone in front of the speaker, I was like, you can't do that. And plus, it would make the sound awful. This That's is another true. thing. It'll make it'll make the sound, I, make the sound I, awful. I, like I just feel bad, you know, for mm -hmm. that sound editing because they're going to be EQing very heavily oh, and yeah. not getting full range because again, it's a it's a line array. So top half is you know highs and mids. Mm -hmm. Uh, drivers up there, and then you know, the base units down below it, it it's not a well rounded sound versus captured raw sound either out oh, of the yeah. XLR out of the back or of uh off the board. Um, uh, so DJ Bradley, what about you? Someone parks their gear in front of you, especially like at like dinner, and they decide to park their uh, cameras in front of you or park uh, a microphone in front of a speaker. What do you do then? So I think part of it is my setups, especially my real, you know, the, over the last couple of years that I'm using, you know, either the Toad or one of my Dragon front boards or similar. A lot of photographers get it that my couple has paid a pretty penny to have that set up there and not to block it. The few times that I've had, you know, photographers throw their bags in front of my, you know, in front of the subs 
prefer my scrims, I will actually take their bag, put it behind my gear and say, hey, don't worry about it. It's behind my setup. It looks nicer that way. And a couple like with videographers and, uh, well, mainly videographers, I check in with them the week of my wedding and I will let them know out the gate, you are not taping or putting a sleeve on my microphones because I don't know that that's going to affect, you know, frequencies and, you know, reception of mics, but also it's going to change where somebody holds the mic and possibly covers the antenna with their hand. So at that point, I, I will let them know in that email when I are you know, a message when I get in touch with them. Hey, what time are you with? You know, what time do you arrive? What time are you leaving? Are there any special events that I need to know for the day with you? And to let you know, I have RCA out. I can give you, if you really want, quarter inch out or XLR out off of any one of my setups. Which works best for you? And... In that same stroke, when they get their day up, they start putting stuff in front of it. I will let them know, nope, not in front. And don't shine your damn light for your, you know, your flash wash light facing at me. I like it. I'm cool about it during the spotlight dances. Fine. But once we're through that, get that light out of my face. Yeah. And I've had to tell a few videographers, okay, spotlights are done. That does not need to be shooting at me now. Move it. And only one gave me a hard time. I'm like, if you keep it up, I can barely see to mix and look at my computer. How am I supposed to continuously do this? Do you want to be detrimental to their day or not? And it's a videographer I've never seen of or heard from again in this market. So I'm wondering if his final product was that bad that he just kind of gave it up and does it on the side now for fun. But I'm pretty straightforward and clear with, you know, photography and videography that these are what I can offer you and this is what I need from you in order to execute my day perfectly. And most of them kind of get it. I mean, I'm sure, Matt, you've seen the same thing, that when you put out one of your nicer setups, you know, AV folks are like, oh, wait a minute, maybe I should put this to the side somewhere or ask the DJ, can I store my stuff behind you? So it doesn't get messed up or taken. Yeah, these people put it right in front. I, I can't stand. I, I've been on a great run of videographers not using their spotlights because I know for a fact my lighting is more than sufficient to get great dancing content all the time. Because I've been told by videographers when I asked, did you have any extra lighting on this awesome reel you made? No, man, your lighting was already sick. It was perfect. So when they have these big ass spotlights, I hate those and I will like wait for them to finally leave um, and then be happy. But I had one this weekend and they put it right next to my setup shining at the dance floor, but it was also like tilted towards me and I kept pressing the wrong buttons. I mean, it, it got so frustrating. I just turned it off. I'm like, you know what? No, you're done with this. Uh, Cause the photographer was right there. I asked, is this yours? He said, no, I'm like, well, I'm turning this off then. And then luckily, you know, they were super cool and, and uh, they moved it to the other side. I think they got the memo. Uh, but even then, like, you don't need a blinding, like, if you're that bad of a videographer that you need this much light to get good content, get a better camera. Yeah. Like, it's, it's crazy. And it's, it makes it so people don't want to dance. Like, when, when it's bright as day on the dance floor, people aren't going to get down and dirty and, and think, oh, I can get away with grinding on this girl. Like, no, no. So it's just, it, I hate it. And I've, I had such a great run of not giant blinding lights i think the last one i had was in june like until this past weekend and it was just such a downer i was like this is so annoying like i can't have a good light show because your light is so bright that it's blinding everything and you know it's and that's the other thing is i don't think that i mean you've seen my setups like what i do is pretty rare in this area just in general like with the whole giant light show and and like the most djs just pop up a gig bar or something simple and to a videographer photographer like it doesn't matter like the light show is not the main attraction but my clients pay for a good light show and when you're interrupting that light show with your light and making it so it's not what they paid for especially if i have lasers and now you're blinding the laser beams like now it's yeah. it's just bad all around so i that like the gear like i i ask nicely if they try to put it near my stuff but like sometimes they just uh, I don't know. Like it's it's such a silly thing. Like they shouldn't need 
all this stuff. And the other part is I get it if you need an external flash and you're going to put a giant tripod somewhere. But then when you just dangle a cord loosely or plug it into a wall outlet and it just looks like even worse that in in a nice venue that's a black tie wedding and everything's all white and here's your giant ugly black stand with uh yeah. you know, duct tape on the floor and it's just I don't know. A lot of a lot of what we have here is people that pay way too much money for photographers and videographers and all they care about is the pictures and the video. They don't care about the dance floor. They don't care about anything else. And I've started to filter out those clients at my wedding shows and be like, look, if all you care about is photography and videography, we're not the company for you. But if you want a dance party and that's your main focus and awesome if it gets caught on film, great. Like come my way because it's just... Well, it's one of the things I feel that as uh, as a DJ, we make the moment, the videographer and photographer capture right. those moments. And for right. us to make those moments, and I've run into a photographers putting their strobe light across the way from me and flashing me, and I get spots, and I can't see the screen because we're taking yeah. pictures. And it was a, a dark room, and all of a sudden they're flashing and flashing and flashing and flashing. And it's like, I, I've told Tracy, I'm like, ask them to move the light. And Tracy's like, oh, it's it's okay. I'm like, no, it's it's I can't see the screen. I mean, I if, if this if this could take beautiful pictures, my iPhone, if this could take beautiful pictures without a giant flash, why can't their camera? <laughs> so I gotta ask a person here who does have experience with video and television. Jeff, you have experience with both. And I know you run some cameras, uh, as well as he is a licensed drone uh pilot. Um, so question for you, sir, uh, cause you, you experienced many different cameras, many different angles. Uh, is that something as a photographer slash videographer, do they need that much light or can they get away with minimal lighting or they get with room lighting and just basically change the, uh, the, the exposure of their, uh, camera? Uh, short answer is no, they don't need that much light. Um, but caveat on that is the more light you have, the higher you can stop down your camera, the more you can keep in focus at, uh, at longer ranges. So, um, you know, if you know anything about the, the dynamics of aperture and, and everything, it's, uh, it, it's pretty complicated, but, but the, the simple, the simple thing, it's just like Matt said, you know, an iPhone can take great photos, can take great videos. Uh, if you're not, if, if you're being paid, good hard cash to video or photo a wedding and that is your you know chosen profession and you can't shoot in dark rooms or even dimly lit rooms then you need to get out of the business because um you know it, it's it, it is uh simple as that you know you don't know what you're doing um but some bigger and i have found that some of the smaller operations are better at shooting in dim light. Some of the bigger operations want to put up more lighting because they think they need to, just because they think it's professional to light it more, you know, especially for video. Um, yeah, photography like, yeah, is like different with, from like, videography, uh, but, um, but yeah, like, it, like, it, it's yeah, kind of weird. Yeah. It's um, sometimes the, you know, the bigger operations will love to put lights up, spotlights or, you know, just wash lights on the crowd you know, or, or the dance floor. And, you know, and it, it is, I, I get it. It's a look, um, but it does interfere with people's eyes. You know, if they're bright, if they're, you know, not colored, you know, and, and uh, yeah, is what it is. But yeah, the, the, today's cameras, yeah, for the past 15 years, cameras have been easily capable of shooting in dimly lit rooms. I still have, getting yeah, decent I still have footage. Have, I still Maybe have, high grain, I have. might have some grain involved with it, but you're going to get away with it. It's going to look fine. Yeah, I still have my camcorder from 10 years ago, and this might need a little light when I'm recording. Like my uh, when I used to record my gig logs, I actually used this camera <laughs> a couple of times and need a little light. Yeah, but you're not a professional videographer charging 2,500 bucks to a wedding couple and bringing that. You know. No, each record, each recording, like each recording, like me or like you know, like you would do, Jeff. Uh, you know, recording for YouTube and stuff like that to show customers. Also, hey, I was here. Here's some pictures, here's some video. But yeah. he here's one of the things that uh, I don't know if you guys seen the movie. Not the movie called The Creator. Um, it is a sci-fi movie that's new out on the market right now. Um, 
I want to see it. I'm a sci-fi fan. And it was shot on a Sony, I want to say FX3. It's a $4,000, $3,000 body. You can get it at B&H. It's not a crazy, you know, like a, a red uh, camera that's, you know, 15 or 20 or 30 or $50,000. They shot this whole entire movie, $80 million movie, which is, you know, again, was a lot of great effects, um, a really great story. A lot of people say, hey, if you like sci-fi, this is a really good movie. And they have a lot of dark scenes in there and they have, you know, special lenses and so forth. And there's videos on YouTube of them, what they used for their rig. And that rig, you know, the guy was breaking down what the rig was. And I was looking up like the lens. The lens is not cheap. Yeah, okay. But it's a really nice lens. You know, uh, the gimbal they used, they they built this gimbal for the uh, for making the movie. But the camera itself, the, the actual body receiving the information is something you can buy very easily. It's it's not it's not consumer grade, it's not prosumer grade, it is more professional grade of a camera. You know, most people are like, you know, Hunter's not gonna run out and spend four thousand dollars or three thousand dollars on a camera. He's gonna use, you know, the camera he has that he's had for a while. Hey, it's great. I'm not gonna go out and spend that. But if I wanted to, I could and have a camera. I know that does a really good look. So I also have it, of this, the you iPhone. You have your phone. And that's mm-hmm. that to me is a frustrating thing is that when I see a videographer, and I have video of wedding like from last year that we had our top package at and with the moving heads and the dance lights. And I have video of the bride doing her garter or her bouquet toss. And the videographer got all these lights on. You can't see the dance lights. The dance lights are not reflected off of her. The dance lights are not refill up the room. What fill up the room is his white light everywhere. It looks like daylight. And that's recorded off my camera. And it's like he overexposed the room. He overlit the room. And this is something that, you know, again, we as DJs are trying to set the mood and stuff like that. It, it's it's hard. So uh, DJ Fire, I don't know if you heard or not, and you were in and out. Uh, you had some technical problems there. But uh, in a nutshell... I had a videographer decide to park a bunch of gear in front of my area, uh, in front of my equipment, uh, hook a microphone up on a stand and put it into the array and uh, park their cameras in front of me during dinner and left them there during dinner. I heard your deal. I went normally when I'm on the uh, podcast here, I've got it on my phone and I'm watching on. So you all know I have two screens in my editing office, and that's where I'm at. So I'm actually multitasking here. So I'm replying to product review emails. I'm working on a video. I'm podcasting, and I'm sending out into the month uh, invoices. So yeah, I I was having problems with my phone. I actually had to watch a YouTube video on how to. Uh, fix my sound like you guys were talking and all of a sudden it was like someone hit the mute button on the deal couldn't hear nothing could see your all lips moving but you wasn't saying anything so I basically had to go and reset my phone and then go in and change a couple settings and now I can hear everybody so good good so what would you do if uh, a photographer or videographer uh, did that Um. well the thing is I've had I've had a videographer like say, hey, um, I got my car keys, my purse, my camera bags. I at least don't want to put them on a table and leave them. I've got three, three to $10,000 worth of gear here. Yeah, no problem. I got some room right here under my booth. Or you, there's a little room right here. You know, behind me, if there's a little cubby hole or something, you guys can put it there. I'll keep an eye on it. No biggie. Um, I've never had someone put up a microphone in front of me. Or um, I have had like you know videographers like walk past me like in the front of me like super close as they're trying to get pictures around the bride and groom which is fine i understand they're getting paid too so i mean I've, we don't have that kind of problem like where i'm at a lot of people don't hire videographers they'll hire a photographer and that's it there's been one wedding yeah yeah yeah, same thing here goes for South Carolina. It's pretty much the same thing. They just mainly hire photographers and no big art videographers. So they, I get uh, what you're they I've had one wedding. Uh that was the one I did at the country club live in May. Yeah. Um they had a, a photographer and a videographer, but it was the same company. 
So there was one photographer and two videographers, and they were running all over the place. You know, one of them had that little thing carrying a super to get like the super cinematic shots. Uh, one was taking pictures. There was they were running back and forth to this other room, changing lenses, uh, grabbing batteries, memory cards, whatever. There was a couple of them that had their cameras and their tripods attached to it while they were taking pictures. So if they need to set it up for a quick take picture, but never had anything with setting up microphones or, or anything. And 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 buddy, wouldn't you think if they put their microphone up towards the top of your speakers, that probably wouldn't be very good audio, would it? Nope. Yeah. Nope. And that's why I told that's why I told them and they just smiled, said no problem. I'm like, okay. I, I again it's not my product because the fact that you know it's what they're capturing. I have no problem whatsoever with someone hooking to my board. I have no problem with that someone hooking up to a speaker. They're gonna get the same stuff that they hear. They're gonna have recording. I've worked with videographers. Tons of them, they love that. They're like, oh, I can hook right in the board. Yes, right out of the main. You get the same things come out of the speakers, you hear the same thing. So all the all the capture of all the um toast and everything like that, music, everything. You'll get everything that, that's there. And then you can edit later. Right. You usually put up a little recorder, plug in an XLR or plug in, you know, a quarter inch or plug in RCA or plug in, you know, a headphone jack, whatever it is, usually something they could plug in and Done and over with. There you go. So that's that's what I did. Yeah. So what I'm in here. So then I've got this screen. I've got emails. I've also got uh, all different kinds of stuff. I am so busy. This is if I miss one day of not answering emails, I've got 20 emails I've got to get caught up on. I mean, and most of the time, these emails from my product review channel they come anywhere between eight o'clock at night all the way till three four o'clock in the morning. And someone's got something so, behind you, or a cattail. Oh, it's Kitty Cat. She's in here. Okay, I, I thought I thought maybe it was a shish kebab or something. No, that's Kitty Cat. And it's another cool thing. So I got these. So this is the remote, and then I have these plugins that are plugging to different things in my house. So I just turned on my light in my room without even getting out. <laughs> so yeah, I, I got cool. one for our I got so I got hard. that for our living room with the little plugs you plug in the wall and plug the lights in. I got that for our living room. It's it's fantastic. Uh, you can do the lights real quick and turn it off real quickly and then be done with it. Oh wow. All right. So the hour is already up. Man, the hour goes by so fast, so quickly. I want to <laughs> thank you guys all for tuning in. If you guys are here watching, I want to thank all the panel here for watching. And as always, we appreciate you here. So with that said. Hunter, take us out. Wow. So Hunter gets to do the outro. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. He always does. <laughs> it. So